Let us understand how to perform outer joints using Spark SQL. Earlier we have seen uh, details with respect to inner joints. Now we are talking about outer joints. When it comes to outer joints, there are three different types of outer joints. One is left outer joint, which is default. So if you do not specify left or right, and if you just specify outer joint, by default it is nothing but left outer joint. And then we have right outer joint, and then we have full outer joint. When it comes to left outer joint, it is nothing but getting all the records from both the data sets which satisfies joint condition, along with those records which are in left side table but not in the right side table. If it is right outer join, it will get all the records from both the data sets which satisfies join condition along with those records which are in the right side table but not in the left side table. Typically, if you have two tables uh, on which you are trying to perform the join, if they are related, one table will be parent table and the other table will be child table. We always uh, specify the side of the join depending upon which side the parent table is. So in our case, we have orders and order items. Orders is the parent table and order items is the child table. Depending upon the side of the orders, we will actually de define uh, either left or right. If orders is on left side, we will say left auto join. If orders is on the right side, we will say right auto join. However, there are exceptions. Not necessary that all the time the tables which are being used as part of the auto join are related, but in many cases they will be related. And depending upon the side of the parent table, we typically use the left or right. That being said, when it comes to full auto join, it is nothing but left auto join, union right auto join. When we perform the auto join, we will see this. It will get all the values from both the tables when join condition satisfies. However, if the join condition does not satisfy, then it will actually get all those records from the left side table with the corresponding column values from the right side table with the null values. We will see an example and you should understand what I'm talking about. When it comes to examples of outer join, we will try to get all the orders where there are no corresponding order items and also we will see if there are any order items where there are no corresponding orders. If the data quality is good, then the second query should not return anything because uh, order items is supposed to be child table of orders. If there are order items where there are no corresponding orders, then we have data quality issues and we have to troubleshoot and fix those issues. That being said, now let's run this query to understand the syntax of uh, outer join you can see that you have this additional left keyword here. Other than that, it is same as what we have seen with respect to inner join earlier. And you should be able to see the results here. We are trying to get three columns from orders, order ID, order date, and order status. Two columns from order items, order item, order ID, and order item subtotal. And you should be able to see the results here. With order ID three, where there is no corresponding record uh, in order items, we got null values for order item, order ID, and order item subtotal. That is what I am talking about when I say this. Okay, so now uh, let's get the count earlier when we actually perform the inner join between orders and order items. Uh, because order items is the child table from the orders, we got the count equal to the order items. Now, if we run this query, it will typically greater than the original count, uh, which we got with inner join. And now you can see that it is 183,650. Earlier it was 172,198, which is same as uh, the count in order items. Uh, with outer join, it is 183,650. We have seen that when we actually explored the inner joins earlier. I have cleared the outputs, that's why it is not showing up. But when we actually run these counts of orders, order items, and then count on join results, we got the same number, 172,198 between order items and the join results. I'm running it again, and you can see it here. Now we got more than this, and the count is this number, 183,650. Now, as part of the example, what we are trying to say is get all those orders where there are no corresponding order items, which means we are looking for those records similar to order ID 3, where order item order ID and order item subtotal are null. Typically, if we have to get those records which are there on the parent table, but not in the child table, whatever column that is used in the join condition, we should compare that against null and we should get the results. We should not use order item subtotal uh, comparing against null to get those records which are there on the main table when we perform auto join with the other table. That being said, to satisfy the example given earlier, if you want to get all the records that are there in orders but not in order items, as part of the where condition, we should specify the table which is used in the join condition from the second table and compare against null like this and you should be able to see only those records which are there in orders but not in order items. This is one of the most commonly used scenario with respect to auto join and you can see that uh, all the records uh, are null for order item order ID and order item subtotal. Now if I want to get the count it should be the difference between uh, this number 
and uh, this number which we have seen earlier which is approximately 11,000 and you can actually see that here we have 11,452 orders where there are no corresponding order items. If we want to improvise on it further, it doesn't make any sense for orders to be in complete or closed status with no corresponding order items. From the business perspective, if there is an order which is in completed or closed status, if there are no corresponding order items, then there can be something wrong and we have to troubleshoot and fix that issue. It can be application related issue and we have to work with the application team and get it fixed. Or it can be data quality issue and we have to troubleshoot while copying data from some source if something is uh, messing up with the statuses and we have to fix that process. That being said, let us uh, run this query. We just improvised by having additional condition such as o.order status in complete comma closed. Ideally it should be close to zero but we have 5189 of such orders where there are no corresponding order items and also order status for those orders is either complete or closed. Which means there is a serious issue and we have to make sure that we talk to the respective teams and fix it. Now let's talk about the second example. As part of the second example, we are trying to get all the order items where there are no corresponding orders. If the data quality is good, we should not be seeing any such records. Let's uh, get into the queries here. Depending upon the side of the order items, we have to specify either left or right. As the order items is on the right side, we are using right order join. We can run this query. As all our order items have corresponding entries in orders, order ID, order date, order status are all not null values here. We can also run the count to see how many records are there which satisfies the joint condition. We have 172,198 records. We can also run this query to see all those records which are in order items but not in orders. We don't have any such records which are there in order items but not in orders which means the data quality of our orders and order items from the relationship perspective is good.